Hello and welcome to this description of the distortion that's caused when a weld cools. I'm using ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. This is a very simplified model. It does not consider temperature dependent material properties. A more realistic model would have temperature dependent modulus of elasticity, temperature dependent coefficient of thermal expansion, and temperature dependent plastic material properties since we're going to get permanent deformation as this weld cools. Let's take a look though at how this very simplified model was set up. You can see four bodies, the two larger solid bodies, here and here. Then we have two welds, here and here. They're fillet welds and notice that their reference temperature has been set to 700 degrees Celsius. So we're going to look at what happens if these welds cool from 700 degrees. The other two bodies are at the environment temperature, which is defaulting to 22 degrees Celsius. If I go down to static structural, you can see that the environment temperature, where nothing else gets used, is 22 degrees. Let's have a quick look at the contacts in this model. Here's a bonded contact between the bottom of the left fillet weld and the face of the horizontal plate, and here's one on the other fillet weld. Note that the contact is on the smaller face in red, and the target is on the larger face in blue. Here are contacts between the fillet welds and the vertical body. Again, contact is on the smaller face. and You can see them here. These have all been set to bonded contact. Finally, there's a frictionless contact between the bottom of the vertical plate and the top of the horizontal plate. This holds the model together. Then there are three displacement constraints. They've been placed on vertices and are simply being used to prevent rigid body motion while not resisting the thermal expansion of this model. There are two load steps. We can have a quick look. In the first load step, we're not taking sub-steps, and it's simply setting up an equilibrium condition that solves quickly. In the second load step, we are taking sub-steps in order to follow the ramping of the temperatures. If we had material plasticity, which a more realistic model might have, then we might want to take even more sub-steps. Here's our thermal condition, and notice that it's been set up in tabular form. During our first load step out to time 1, we're holding those two fillet welds at 700 degrees, and in the second load step, we ramp their temperatures down to the environment temperature of 22. Now this is very much an approximation of what a real model would do. A highly realistic model would need to include a thermal transient simulation and might need to include element birth and death in order to capture the fact that these welds cool off to solidify at different times. That makes the more accurate analysis quite tricky. But these are the essentials of a first order approximation. Our mesh is simple. These are high order elements. That's the only real load on the model, in addition to preventing rigid body movement. Here's the deformation at the end of the second load step, after the welds have cooled off. Here's the equivalent stress. Here is stress in the longitudinal or Z direction. And finally, I check the force reaction where I have supports on this model. I'm getting very small forces, but they're very tiny compared to the loads and stresses that are happening inside the model. This is a nonlinear analysis. I've turned on large deflection. I have a nonlinear contact in here. So here we are with the z-direction stresses in this simplified first-order approximation of weld distortion and 
residual stresses. We're at residual stresses because our temperature here is at the final 22 degrees Celsius everywhere. Thanks for joining me.